Well, the landslide threat, Mark, as you point out, is growing with every drop that comes down. And the hills, the places where they can happen, from right here in downtown to even remote parts of western Washington. They are common around western Washington. Many are along the waters of Puget Sound, steep slopes. And it's the combination of rain and gravity which causes them to give way. They undermine roads and slam into homes. They've blocked tracks in our commute. But in western Washington, not all landslides are the same. They range from small mudslides or mud flows to the massive Oso landslide of March 2014, a slide that killed 42 people, making it the deadliest landslide in U.S. history. And they behave really differently, and they tend to happen in different parts of the year and respond to rainfall differently. Um, so not all landslides are the same. That's right. Dave Montgomery is a professor of geomorphology at the University of Washington. In other words, he studies how dirt moves. The typical landslide in the Northwest works like this, and a key to it is an impervious layer of clay not far below the surface. When we get lots of rain, and that rain soaks through the upper layers of soil, it eventually reaches that clay layer. But it can't go through the clay because the water builds up on top of the clay, the upper layer of soil no longer sticks and slides off. Shallow landslides tend to be much closer tied to the peaks in rainfall intensity. So you can look at sort of the 24 hour rainfall intensity, how much rain we get in a day as being a pretty good predictor for that day or the next day or two in terms of um, shallow landslides. And this very simple graphic from the U.S. Geological Survey shows when the likelihood of a slide goes up. Each of those symbols is a rain total recorded at key airports from Tacoma Narrows to Everett's Payne Field. The more the symbol is above the red line, the more likely some slope near there will let loose. But there are a lot of reasons why all of our slopes simply don't let loose all at once. There's some evidence that suggests that it's high intensity cells of very intense rainfall that kind of localize how much extreme water falls in a particular place. And that's really hard to predict uh, well, it's impossible to predict in advance, and it's really hard to track. So Professor Montgomery says there are other factors, vegetation, what kind of vegetation are on those hills? Uh, what influence have people made on it? Is there construction there? Maybe that makes the risk worse. Maybe it makes it less likely to happen. So you have all of those things to think about, and it doesn't just happen during the middle of a rainstorm. It may not come for a day or two after the rain stops. Live in Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.